All Elite Wrestling returns to touring in July. Drop kicking off the tour with AEW Dynamite on TNT on Wednesday, July 7th in Miami at the James L. Knight Center. And who better to talk AEW in Miami than one of AEW's newer signees, Miami's own Red Velvet. Thank you, Red. Hey, what's it like having AEW Dynamite and TNT in your own backyard, Miami? Oh my God, having AEW come to Miami, it's gonna be an amazing experience. It's actually gonna be uh, my first show that is not in Jacksonville, and it's so amazing that it happens to be in my hometown. So I'm beyond excited. I can just imagine the fans, how excited they are. Are you getting a lot of ticket requests from family and friends already? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. Uh, I keep telling them I don't know if I'm on the show yet, but they still don't care. They want to come. And, you know, they should. You know, whether I'm on the show or not, I think it's going to be just an amazing experience that they get to see it live. They watch it every week on TV, but it's just not the same. When you first learned about AEW touring again and that it was coming to Miami, what were your first thoughts about, wow, this this big event, we've been going through much, so much the last year, and hey, great, we're back to touring, and it's going to be in Miami. Just what does it say about AEW and being able to tour again? Well, my first thought was, oh my God, I hope I get on this show because it's my hometown. So uh, everyone knows, you know, because of COVID and stuff like that, my mom is getting older and she cannot travel. So it would be the perfect situation for her to be able to see me live uh, so she cannot travel because she's older. Um, but... Them coming to tour, it's just, it's going to be great for all of us. I think we need things to start going back to normal. And um, I've never done a show in a full, lone stadium with fans full capacity yet. So I think this is definitely um, something I will never forget. What has it been like for you this past year? Everybody's been going through a lot everywhere. And... But in your instance, you've really been able to make a name for yourself in this last year during this pandemic. Oh, yes, definitely. To me, um, I know COVID has not been, the pandemic itself has not been great for people, but it changed my life completely and for the better. If it wasn't for the pandemic, you know, I don't think my career would have taken off as quickly as it did. And, like, it gave AUW a chance to see me uh, on more than one occasion than trying to, like, you know, catch them to get a look at you when they're on the road. So, you know, it's going to go down in history. The pandemic has changed our life, but it definitely changed my life for the good. And um, I don't think I would be where I, where I am right now, specifically with AEW, if it wasn't for them having been, like, stationed in just one spot. For you, you made the best of a bad situation, and it really worked out well for you and for others because... AW was be able to do shows first without fans in Jacksonville and then safely having some fans come to Jacksonville but have it mainly done at Daly's Place. And wow, Red, even that AW Dark show, which I love on YouTube, which shines independent wrestling talent. How did you get your shot at AW Dark? Um, well, mine was out of nowhere. Truthfully and coincidentally, it happened on my birthday. Um, I was uh, I got reached out to come. So to me, that was the best birthday gift ever. And uh, I didn't think twice about it. You know, I got myself there however I could. And I said, this is, this is a chance that I get. You only get one chance, you know. So I went in there with all positive vibes. And, you know, fast forward almost a year later, um, here I am, signed full time to All Elite Wrestling. Well, it's interesting because for those that may not know, when you say you're in Florida, South Florida, and you're going to North Florida, it's like, oh, okay, whatever. But when you're going from Miami to Jacksonville, that's like a three-state trip. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I, when I first started, I was uh, living in Miami. I'm uh, Now I'm stationed in Orlando with my fiancé, but I was living in Miami and working in Miami, so... It was hard, you know, and I think that's what makes me even more grateful now uh, that I'm signed full time because I was putting in the work. I was leaving Daly's place and driving all the way to Miami to have one hour of sleep to go right back to my regular job. And I just kept telling myself every day, like, this will be.
be worth it. Like, just keep going. I just knew in my heart I just had to keep going. And the drive and the miles didn't matter. I put so many miles on my car, and I do not regret it. It was the best decision I ever made. You mentioned about getting a call to have a shot with AEW and then perform uh, wrestling, performing on AEW Dark. How surprised were you? Did you did you reach out to them at all, or it's just something that sort of happened? Hey, they're looking for any wrestlers. You get a call and you're on your way. Well, I had reached out, but like just a while back, and then uh, I guess a friend saw me and referred me. So then I got um, contacted, but I had reached out to them a, a while back. But I think everything is just timing. Um, and then in June, they asked me if, if I could come and stuff like that. And, you know, I, you have to get yourself there. You're not contracted. But I didn't even think twice about that. that was, I was just like, oh, yeah, I even get an opportunity to have them look at me. I'm there. You didn't even have to ask me twice. I was going to do anything I could. And then you debuted on AEW Dark. And I hope I have this right. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're in a tag match against Allie and Brandy Rhodes. That is amazing. What was that like for you, that first match? Here you are, and you know all eyes are on you. This is this is make or break for you right here. What was that experience like? Uh, that was that was really nerve wracking because I mean you're going up against two veterans and like you know Cody's in there and he's part of the office and this is his wife and you're thinking like please don't hurt her you know and it's just it was it was nerve wracking but I knew that this was the challenge that I needed. And I went out there, I did everything I needed to do, and it worked out very, very, very well for me. So I try not to let the nerves get the best of me. Nerves are always something that's natural because you just always want to do well. Um, but the only mentality I had going into it was you only get one shot, you know. And even if I got multiple shots, obviously I kept coming back, but I just always kept the mentality you only have one shot. You know, are you going to make the best of it or are you going to let yourself crumble under pressure? And um, that's just what I've been doing time and time again, you know, rising to the occasion. I like being under pressure. <laughs> well, Red, the thing is, you're thriving on the pressure situations, and you've been put in big matches early on in your AEW career. It's amazing. You faced Sheeta. Recently, you had a match against Serena Deep for the NWA title. You've been on AEW Dynamite. You had the big tag match with Shaq and Cody and Jade. That was awesome all, as well. Just all these opportunities that you've had and you've been able to succeed. But I'm wondering in those early stages, after the tag match, were there a few matches after that where more eyes start looking at you and say, well, hey, we got to get her back. We got to keep using her. Or was it just, was it a process or were there a few matches that really helped elevate you with them? I think um, it definitely took a shift once I started tagging with Brandy. I think. Um, I was getting looked at more as being very reliable uh, and a solid part of what could have been part of the women's roster. So I think after my first tag match with Brandy, we went against uh, Layla, who's now signed as well. Uh, we did very well, and it took off from there. But the match that really shifted my career and got all eyes, I think, in the company on me was definitely the tag match. I think... It was just not only the pressure of it being such a big match, but just the fact that I was able to sustain myself and not let how much eyes were on the match take away from the goal. And the goal was that I was going to put some respect on Red Velvet's name. And not only that, to showcase everything I've been working so hard for. So definitely that match really, I think, put eyes on just how good I am and, and that I don't crack under pressure, you know, because not everyone can take that situation and thrive because nerves sometimes are your worst enemy. But I was just like, nope, it's time to show out and show everybody what I know I can do times 10. Then you did. You and Cody Rhodes against Jay Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal we all know Miami Heat fans know it's champion down here at the Miami Heat. So it's just, it's amazing because that match too, because of Brandy's situation, you had to take her spot. So that was another area where an opportunity opened for you. And who knows what would happen if that didn't happen? Because then shortly after that, you got signed by AW. What was it like getting signed? And when you were told, we want to sign you, how did that just make you feel? Well, um, yeah, 
up, you know, Brandy being pregnant is a beautiful thing, but it was a blessing in disguise. And everyone always says when one door closes for someone, another one opens. But I, you know, I'm extremely grateful that, you know, I was chosen to be the one to replace her. And to this day, you know, I hope I made her proud because I was out there to not only prove what I could do, but to make her proud and, and have her live a little bit through me, through that match that she uh, could not be involved in. But um, I was actually just walking around the arena uh, on the day of revolution. And I remember I got pulled to the side uh, by Christopher Daniels and he just held my hand and he wasn't saying anything. So I just automatically thought that I was in trouble. And I just looked at him and I was like, principal's office, what's going on? Am I in trouble? And he was like, no, I have really great news for you. We want to sign you full time. I mean, it's no secret I was there. I was uh, on a tier zero before that. Um, and I won't go into too many details of what that contract is, but at Revolution, um, I was told I was going to be signed full time with All Elite. So that was just, you know, I was excited about just even watching Revolution and, you know, supporting everyone there. But that day uh, was really special because I, I didn't see it coming. So I think I'll always be grateful, no matter the outcome or, you know, the, the heat, you know, I will always be grateful for Cody. Shaq and Jade because they put me to the test that night um, and that's I believe what, what helped me get a full time contract so I'll always be grateful Who do you call or text first after that happens? Um, I was so in shock that I didn't call anyone right away I just kind of like let it sink in and um, I try to enjoy the pay per view um, but when I got a little bit of free time, the first person I called uh, was my fiance Wes, um, because I wanted to have a private moment and you know cry uh, and just with him on the phone and not have anyone freak out and think that something was wrong, you know. And um, yeah, I called him, and then after that, I waited till I got back to my hotel and I called my mom and my sister, and it was great. And then I called my trainer, of course, because I feel like every trainer's dream and accomplishments to have their student get signed somewhere big so i definitely wanted to make sure i let my trainer know that that he did well with me you know that was a very great moment i'm getting teary i just thinking about it again because it's like you go through these moments and you know just having to like sit and talk about it and, and relive it again it, it just it's great i've i've been very blessed this year Blessed and awesome and positive. And it's interesting because Wes, obviously, a pro wrestler himself, would understand greatly. And then your mom and your sister who've been to a lot of your indie shows down here in South Florida. Oh, yeah. I know. And then also your trainer. And um, is that would that be JB Cool? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so JB at Fighting Evolution Wrestling where you got your start. It's just amazing. And I want to ask you about Fighting Evolution Wrestling. How did you get your start with FEW and just find out about a pro wrestling school? Well, I originally um, was looking for wrestling schools and I was only finding schools that were in like Orlando and then I was willing to pay to move. Um, but then I came across La Rosa Negro and she had a school, but she was training at an MMA gym. So I actually started with her and man, she kicked my butt, but she put me in such great ring shape. And she was fortunate enough to go to Japan. So then she told me, hey, um, I know JB. I've known him for years. I know that he's opening up school. So I went to a show that he was wrestling on and said, hey, I want to come to your school. And he was like, all right, well, I'm having a grand opening next week and stuff. And it was just from there on, I went. I signed up. I remember he, I used to go even on Saturdays. Like on Saturdays, no one was there. Like no one wants to waste their weekend. But I was there and I was new and I was so happy to go. I remember he used to say, like, oh, man, like, you just were not good when you started. Like, you were so tiny, and, like, you didn't look like you liked to take bumps. And he was like, she's only going to last you, like, maybe a week. And he said that, no, that he was so shocked that, like, the following week I came back, the following month, and then it turned into a year, and I just never left. And to this day, we still talk about it. I still call him um, after all my matches, and he watches them, and, and just helps me uh, always stay close to to home, you know, because fame and fortune and stuff can, can really change you and take a toll on you. So I always try to go back to, you know, where I started. And I always call him and I call the Rose all the time to have them watch my matches and just keep me fresh, you know? 
That two good ones right there, La Rosa Negra and JB Cool. That's awesome. Red, did you have any type of sports background? I read you had a dance background. Was sports part of uh, your DNA as well growing up? You were a South Miami High School graduate. Yeah, I was um, growing up when I was 12, I started MMA because uh, my dad used to be a boxer, so he wanted us to learn self defense. So in MMA, they taught us like MMA and boxing and stuff, but I didn't want to box because I just was more like of an entertainment type person. So I went on to dance and got my degree in dance and uh, was the youngest person to get signed into uh, this local company in Miami. It was a dance company, New Century Dance Company. I was the youngest one. I had just turned 18. Uh, and I traveled with the world with them and then started wrestling. But I did uh, a little bit of MMA, um, but dance took over my life. And, and I wouldn't change it because dance is what makes Red Velvet who she is and makes me a showstopper. I'm not afraid to... I'm not afraid of people or audiences. I love it, and, and I have to give that to dance. And dance is physical, and there's choreography involved, which lends itself to professional wrestling. There are others that have been in dance that have gone on to be successful professional wrestlers, and now you're following along in that lineage. And I, I'm curious, Brad, do you think that you're becoming one of the most famous South Miami senior high school alums? Oh, for sure. Um, the funniest part is I made a promise to myself that um, my 10-year high school reunion, I wanted to walk in and be a professional wrestler. And I mean, signed professional wrestler. Because you're a professional wrestler even in the independent circuit. But I made a promise to myself that 10 years later after high school, I will walk into my high school reunion, signed talent. And um, because of the pandemic, the reunion did not happen. But to the day, I was already assigned talent. So that's great. Um, I have friends from high school who watch wrestling and they cannot believe that I'm a professional wrestler. Like we used to talk about it all the time, but I think I think people people have came up to me and they just say that they look up to me for being a big dreamer and making it happen. A lot of people dream big, but a lot of people let fear stop them. And I I never have. I was like, this is what I'm gonna do, and there's no one's gonna tell me that I'm not gonna do it. And yeah, I think uh, my high school is pretty impressed that. At what I do uh, Wednesdays on TNT. <laughs> that is great. And it's interesting because obviously, first and foremost, pro wrestling, all elite wrestling, that's your thing. But do you ever have thoughts of trying MMA? Um, I always said that uh, later on in my career, or maybe if the you know, opportunity presents itself, I would love to have like, you know, a real MMA uh, match. I was having a, a talk with them. The road that she's done that as well. And I was like, that'd be cool, you know, just to test myself, my boundaries. Um, but I think right now, being such a uh, young talent and so new in AEW, the goal is to have a long, successful career uh, at AEW. So that's my goal right now. I think MMA would be great. But now that I've worked so hard to get my dream job, I have to do everything to stay consistent and stay part of the roster, you know? Well, I want to just mention Mia Michaels, South Miami High, class of 84, is a choreographer known for judging the reality television show, So You Think You Can Dance. So if you ever have any window of opportunity opening up during days off with AEW, that might be something you could try as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, I always wanted to go on So You Think You Can Dance growing up. And, and I said it. I said, I'm going to do wrestling, but... I would love to be on Dancing with the Stars to represent, you know, all elite wrestling. That not only am I a wrestler, but I still have the blood of a dancer in me, and I can win, you know. So that'd be a cool little trophy to bring back to AEW. So we'll see. We'll put it into the universe. Oh, that would be great. Dance with the Stars, too. And you have the connection with so you think you can dance with the high school with Mia Michaels. That's cool, too. Hey, I'm wondering. Oh, yeah. Red, I'm wondering, were you a Miami Heat fan at all? I was. I wanted to try out for the Miami Heat. Um, but then I got into my teen years and got completely tattooed, and I was like, I don't think they're going to uh, want me in the dance team anymore, but I love the Miami Heat, uh, watched them grow up, which I think is full circle how I was, you know, ended up in the ring with Chad. Yes! Heat, uh, which was great, you know, he's great, um, regardless that he was on the opposite side of the team. He's, he's so great, and that was an honor. I love the Heat. I always want to become a Miami Heat dancer, so definitely Miami Heat fan, all the way. And Layla became a professional wrestler who was a Miami Heat dancer. Did yeah, very well yeah. for herself there. But it's so cool that you're in this tag match, and there's Shaq, and it's like, okay, it's business now, it's business. 
Then in the back of your mind, before or after, you're thinking, oh man, he helped the Miami Heat win their first NBA title. How cool is that? that yeah, that was, that was the amazing part. You know, of course, there was a focus first, and that was to win the match. But um, even after that, you know, I still showed my respect, and respect goes a long way. And I respect him. He did a lot. He's a legend in, in the basketball world, and, and he played for the Heat, so that's close to home. You know, you can't help but like the guy, even though you, you don't want to, you know? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I, I remember that. I remember their first championship win because it went crazy in my house and in the whole neighborhood in Miami. People came out with pots and pants. It was great. Oh, yeah, I love the pots and pans when everybody's celebrating down in Miami. That's Miami style, Red. The pots and pans. That yeah, is. banging the pots and pans. Yep. Oh, all right, so we're going to wrap this up. I'll, I'll try to get a couple quick questions here. The, the short story, how did you get the name Red Velvet? Red Velvet, um, which I've said in so many podcasts, kind of funny, it first started with my hair. I went through a very uh, traumatic breakup. So I said, I'm going to change my hair, I'm going to change my look, and start fresh, and I dyed my hair. But let's stop red. And then uh, I had to uh, try out for a wrestling show. So I was like, all right, I need to come up with a wrestling name. And it was originally Red Violet. And my friend who loved wrestling was like, that's so bad. It's not going to stick. He's like, you remind me of a Red Velvet cupcake. You're small, you're sweet, you know, beautiful chocolate skin with the red fiery hair. So it almost started as a description at first. And then it almost became like my alter ego because people think Red Velvet is dirt. Which is me, I'm a sweet person, but then there's also velvet fabric, which is elegant, unique, sophisticated, and that's how I try to move in the ring as well with my dance background. So it almost all tied together. Um, definitely started with the hair. And uh, a fan wrote the other day, do you call yourself red because it's the color of your blood and you have the blood of a fighter? And I was like, never thought of it like that, but we're going to take that because I actually really like it. Yeah, that is really cool. The good description for that and all the fire, the fire, the intensity. That's cool. And then yep. I also, I love the stir in the pot. I'd like to see more stir in the pot. I just think it's really cool. Yep. How did you come up with that? That is really good. It was funny because um, when I first started, I would say like, oh, I'm serving it up. I'm about to serve it up, you know, give everybody what they want. And I was actually just trying to jokingly get James Harden's uh, attention because he used to do it all the time in basketball. So I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll get nervous. I mean, no, it's not nervous. Maybe I'll get noticed by him, and he'll see it. You know, I'm bringing it to the wrestling world. And then it kind of took off, and uh, Taz on commentary one day was like, oh, she's stirring it up. She's stirring the pot. And I was like, man, like, that has such a better, like, bring to it. So I guess I stir it up to get ready to serve it up, you know. Uh, but definitely has taken off. And, and that just means, like, once it starts stirring the pot, it, it's about to go down in the kitchen, you know. And the thing is, too, Red, I, I'm just we'll wrap this up. Hey, so what is your favorite color? Well, as everyone would think it's red, it's actually turquoise and green. Um, when I was growing up, my mom was my everything, and her favorite color was green. And that just stuck with me. I don't know if it was because I was just so close to my mom, and then I wanted to be just like her. Um, but I've always stuck to the color green. And I'm a very... Uh, nature, natural person, so I think green resonates with everything around the world, you know, the grass and nature, so green and turquoise are definitely my favorite color, but I love to wear red. The earth, earth tones, earth color, do it for the ecology, yes, and lastly, red, we'll let you out of here, and everybody, AW Dynamite on TNT, drop kicking off the tour in Miami, July 7th, James All Night Center. Red, what is your favorite cupcake? My favorite cupcake is between red violet and carrot cake. I like carrot cake. I don't know if they make a carrot cake cupcake, but... Um, oh, and my third one is fun studying, so we'll go with those three. Yes, but red velvet's in there, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's in there. Thank you so much, Red. Thank you so much for having me, Jim.